is called Sophia Bekele. She's from an organization called Dot Connect Africa, which is an interesting one because you're discussing the Dot Africa domain. Now, you want to have a Dot Africa. The US tried to have their country domain and they tried to push it Dot US, which not too many people are using. A lot of them prefer Dot com. We also have, like we were saying um, right at the very beginning, countries have Dot ke, there's Dot et for Ethiopia, there's Dot za for South Africa which a lot of people may have invested uh, not just money, but also in terms of just marketing muscle behind them. Um, what's the benefit of actually having another domain name on top of that? And secondly is, how many of us are that passionate about Africa that's outside of our little individual countries? Okay, let me answer uh, the questions uh, consecutively. The first question you ask about the .us. Yes. Initially, when the, uh, uh, the organization that is giving, uh, issuing this domain, top-level domain names, mm -hmm. as they're said, uh, out of California, they had given... That's ICANN. ICANN. Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. Mm -hmm. That's the authority that actually issues that. Yes. So they had given it to all the countries around the world mm -hmm. to manage and do whatever they want. Yes. So branding, in fact, was not even a big deal at that time. Mm -hmm. It's probably more engineering point of view. So the U.S. and all the countries got theirs, and the U.S. moved it. And you know, U.S. is very commercial more than anything else. So the dot coms came in with huge marketing, with com starts for commercial. Yes. And org start for org organization. organization yes. And the net is like when you run out of dot com, yes. people came up with the net for the network. So that's how it goes. So I think. Um, uh, it was well commercial, it was uh, put a lot of money into it, so dot com succeeded for a global mm -hmm. identifier of commercial entities. Yes. Okay, so then came the national identities, and if we mm -hmm. come to Africa, really, they have been designated, but not much, there has been not much of an uptake. Mm -hmm. Like in your business card, um, you have a dot, yes. ke dot Kenya, or yes. no, no, your mm -hmm. physical address is oh, yes, Kenya. Oh, yes, Yeah, so that is identifiable maybe for the global world, but when you're looking at dot ke, Really, nobody knows oh, .ke, mean, uh, dot .za, dot, dot. but it, automatically dot .africa brings it to the global platform of saying, okay, we're located in Africa. Mm -hmm. And so it just brings the visibility for Africa and then a united voice, one domain. And outside of that, there are a lot of people who want to do businesses around the continent, pan-African organization, mm -hmm. and a lot of small, medium enterprises because of the internet and the level of integration that's happening right now because of technology, uh, e-commerce and so forth, people are actually expanding to the rest of Africa and, we wa and they want to, believe me, a uh, dot uh, African name. And we have this Yes campaign that's going on right now and we get a lot of feedback, people saying like we just recently got something from Nigeria that says that uh, we are doing EDU education in, uh, in uh, South Africa and Nigeria and other places uh, so doing, like combined, yeah, uh, they want a dot .edu okay. dot Africa. So there's a lot of innovation and opportunity that comes with uh, having the top level domain name. All right, moving into a slight tangent with regard to, and, and you've been in this for years, which is uh, the issue of technology transfer and all that. Again, several issues there, but the primary one is there's a debate between technological transfer where people say that um, countries that have more developed technologies can transfer these to less developed technology can transfer their skills and all that. But typically what will happen is that we'll get old mobile phones and we'll get old computers. And so we, we end up having is e-dumping. Now, how do we control for that? Because a lot of these people think they're doing the right thing. The other day I saw something um, in the British papers, I think it was, where people are being told to give their old mobile phones so they can be distributed in Africa. Um, number one, you're killing all the mobile phone shops in Africa. But secondly is, that issue of e-waste, this phone call, I mean, this uh, mobile phone probably has six months of life left in it before it totally dies. Right. How do you control for that? Um, I, I don't look at it as a, a control. I look at it as uh, the lack of policy Africa had mm -hmm. in the past to jump to be part of the digital yes. age. Okay. Now that imagine we have all this fiber, we have all this digitalization going on in Africa, mm -hmm. and people are now going to start dumping Mm -hmm. uh, computers to Africa. It is like 10 years ago was mm -hmm. the wave of dumping things in Africa, um, uh, mobiles and so forth. But right now Africa is coming up because of the fiber. Mm -hmm. And once we have all that fiber in the next three, four years, the scenario of how the waste looks at Africa and the kind of applications that is being built right now, even for mobile applications, if you know, there are a lot of trend that even top companies are building content for the low end um, for the low-end uh, mobile phones, mm -hmm. because uh, it's not a f the smartphones are not affordable for yes. for everyone. And even so people are moving towards lower-end smartphones. That's the, the thing I've noticed. 
it doesn't have a very high resolution screen or it doesn't have very fancy right. technology. But, but it's practical, it's, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think the scenario of how the West looks at Africa, that's been the problem we've had. And that's, I will sell dot Africa right there for you. <laughs> <laughs> but that is the analogy we're changing. Yes. And the fiber and the broadband, if governments are committed and giving their people uh, and upgrading the country in that way, I think the technology dump is going to be an old issue and it's, we're going to see... Um, we're going to be taken seriously where applications will be developed to actually for the masses in Africa. Because on that note, um, there's quite a lot of developers who watch this show. And the question that arises quite a number of times is when you're developing technology for Africa, whether it's physical technology, i.e. devices themselves, or you're developing software and all that, do you target the lower end broader market? So i.e. the device that you come up with is the simplest that you can come up with, but it reaches the broadest number of people. Do you go for the higher end, the bleeding edge of technology, iPads and mobile phones that can sing for you and, and drive your car and all those sorts of things? Where should you be going as Africa? Because people will argue both ways. They'll say, why should you develop very expensive technology instead of paying attention to what reaches the masses? On the other hand, someone will say, why develop something so low end? It's, you're almost patronizing um, the mass of Africa. You'd rather develop high end technology for them. Where to go? If I was uh, Nokia and running Nokia and if I have a group for developing Africa or emerging economies, I will start with the masses. Because the, trying to get the GDP of the masses uh, to a certain level uh, where um, it's going to equate with the, you know, the, it's the pyramid system where people are going to yes. compete to the top, it's going to be a very long time. So why not service the masses with, with the, and develop, uh, do research and innovation to develop something for the, for the mass, like what we just said about the mobile uh, computing. Mm -hmm. develops content that would be fit for uh, the average. Uh, because the other ones, people, when they come in and, uh, and out, they get it anyway. What's your experience with, uh, back to the dot .Africa domain, what's your yeah. experience with the dot .Africa domain in terms of take-up? Um, not necessarily, but you've actually begun it, but in terms of people expressing interest in it, people saying that they want to get the domain name, um, government saying that they're interested in putting their government services on that domain. What's been the take-up? Uh, from the perspective of the campaign we're doing all over Africa, mm -hmm. the average people, university uh, level, they huge, huge uptake. Mm -hmm. They want to draw Africa name. Small media enterprise that are not yet on the internet, motivated to, yes. to get there. Uh, big organizations, the Pan-African organizations, definitely, because they want a Pan-African yes. name. So we're looking at those that are not in between mm -hmm. the lower level again you know from the pan-african and the, and then the medial price they're neutral they're neutral so there's with nothing. their yeah but i think given that there is a proper marketing and a business plan we have a business with the pro the marketing is very important like the safaricom how it took mm -hmm. and nobody thought of uh, the impesa of course and and that will really um make a difference on how uh dot Africa is uh, going to be a success or not. All right, back to another point. And we are targeting the youth, actually. Generation dot Africa, we've th themed it. Does that include me, by the way? You have no idea Yes, you are a generation dot Africa. You have no idea how old I am. I could be 52. That's I'm generation dot Africa. Young. That's generation dot Africa. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're originally Ethiopian. Yes. Um, and you've done business in um, Ethiopia, obviously. Yes. Uh, how is it to do business in Ethiopia? It's what the second largest country in Africa in terms of the number of population. You were telling me it's now 85, I thought it was still 80 million. 80, 85, yeah, I heard recently that yeah. they surpassed Egypt, yeah. So, you're, well, you have 85 million people, which means yeah. everyone is salivating about the Ethiopian economy. It's right. large enough to actually right. conduct business in. Right. On the other hand, the stories are that mobile phones came in fairly late in the day in Ethiopia as opposed to the way they came into the rest of Africa. The stories are about difficulty in doing business in Ethiopia. What is it like to actually do business in Ethiopia? Yeah, doing business in Africa is extremely difficult not only in Ethiopia, uh, in my sense. But Ethiopia is a closed economy. It's been a closed economy. And we're transitioning from the socialist region. Yes. It's about <coughs> 20 years, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then there was war. Mm -hmm. and, and so many things happened that gave the government priority and focusing, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think the economy was not, you know, the management of the economy was probably, I would say, um, not that was not really the focus. Mm -hmm. But no, I think in the last five years, it's been really huge. Uh, ICT sector, you mentioned the mobile. Yes, it was the, um, we got the mobiles very late. But if you look at the prices just recently, I was analyzing even with Kenya, it's 30 cents per minute. Mm 
-hmm. I mean, that's the cheapest all US, of Africa. 30 US or 30 no, Kenyan no, cents? 30, 30 uh, US, uh, no, no, 30 Ethiopian cents. Oh, um, I see, okay. How it is. It's uh -huh. the cheapest. Uh, uh -huh. I think there was a report on World Bank that says that. I think what the government is trying to do is, instead of like having the profit motive of um, they're trying to deliver services for um, you know, for the effective price for, yeah. for the masses. So they're targeting the mass instead of the elite. And so that privatization issue is probably going to still be there. But if you would think that, you know, China has made it through delivering services, technology services to the masses, as long as the mass can afford it, it makes it affordable, um, it's justified for the strategy that they have. So I'm not saying, you know, I'm a private sector economy person, so I believe a private sector-led economy works. But there has been so many debates of between the financial crisis and all that, yeah. you know, the ups and downs of what's of going on in the globe to determine what kind of economy should the world be leading. So we could have a debate on that. How know. easy is it, though, to stitch up African economies? Because it's, it strikes me you've got so much to do. You've, you've got the Ethiopian economy, 85 million people. You've got um, now the Southern Sudanese economy, which is a very fresh economy for a lot of people. You have the East African Oil. economy, which is 130, 135 million odd people. You've got the Southern African economy. It's another, what, almost 100 million people. There's such a huge population for so many goods and services, but you're saying it's difficult to do business in um, this Africa. continent. Do you still have too many closed economies, economies that are not stitched together in the sense that you'll do business in Kenya, but you'll not be able to do business in Ethiopia. You'll apply for a visa from Kenya to go to Mozambique, which is, shouldn't happen. How is your experience like doing business again um, in, this, in this continent? Is it something that you're seeing is improving? Is it becoming worse? Is it something that you're thinking could improve in the next few years? Uh, I'm not call I will not say a few years, but I think we're on the right path of regional integration. I think uh, a lot of African leadership has embraced regional integration, mm -hmm. if not the United States of Africa. However, all the regional, they're developing harmonized policies uh, to improve trade, transport, and hopefully one day we will see one visa for all of East Africa. And, and when we go, at least if it's not a whole continent, yes. we will see regional blocks of development. I think we're going on the right path. We can't be hard on Africa because when we look at our backgrounds 40 years ago, where was it? You know, there was still the colonization issue and yes. so forth and so forth. So, but our, our generation need, need to be hard on our governments to make change. To, I know Kenya is very good at that, <laughs> <laughs> to make the changes yeah. that's required. And we need to push, push, push. Um, so, uh, and then good governance. I'm sorry I have to mention that. Good governance no, is you, not. You should apologize because that's one of the big yeah. issues that we face. Yeah, good governance is not there. It's not there. Um, um, you know, it's not about the term of, uh, how long um, a leader stays in its, in its place. Maybe that's also one of the good governance, but there's absolutely no transparency and accountability in Afri doing business in African governments, I'm sorry. So that's really, really makes it hard mm -hmm. for uh, development to go. Right, finally, finally, um, when do you expect to see the Africa domain? I keep on coming back to that because that's where we started. Yeah. When do you expect just, to see it? We just started a press release today mm -hmm. for, um, uh, for requesting for expression of interest for registry provider. Uh, both in Africa and globally. So um, after that, ICANN uh, next month in San Francisco, where I'll be, uh, they will be actually, hopefully, would uh, announce the Dora. application process uh, to be launched, uh, yeah. the campaign, and then we will apply maybe June, July. And if Great. that happens, you are going to be nation.africa, I hope. <laughs> and we don't have to come to you. I hope you come to us. We will come to you. <laughs> and unfortunately, you were not dressed in red. It's Valentine's Day. I should have told you. Oh, you my gosh. In red. Yes. I need Including a my burgundy tie, which I, I need was a making a lot of fun of. You're <laughs> missing too. <laughs> <laughs> We've yeah. been speaking to Sophia Bekele, who's from Dot Connect Africa. I need to get that correct because she's campaigning for what is called the Dot Africa domain. That's the internet domain as opposed to your normal dot ke, which is a country domain, and dot com, which is sort of the global overall domain. Africa to stitch together the, con the continent's um, economies and the continent's internet presence. It's been great having you on the show. That was your business roundtable on PM Live this Monday. Um, we still have Larry Mador over at the KICC, by the way, who's uh, still standing by in his pink shirt. He forgot to dress in his very, very red shirt that he had last Thursday. Uh, so Larry